Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. Happy Thursday, April 11th. Hope you're doing well. Life is good wherever you are. No particular downloads today, I don't think. <laughs> Um, I will say though, <laughs> here I go, that I've been gleaning a significantly, uh, how can I say it? Mm. I don't even know how to say it. Maybe I'm not supposed to. I'll, I'll, I'll reserve what I was going to say. If, it's, if it happens to come up through the message, so be it, but I'll fall back on that. For now, let's just get right into the message. <clears throat> Here is the Knight of Wands. Something's telling me to look at that. Mm, either going chasing skirts or running away from skirts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one, but I felt guided to look at that. Let's see. Oh. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. I just heard lusting after the world. So someone that's, that could be a bit imbalanced in their primal nature and desires or reform from it because like I said it's either he's chasing skirts or running away so it could be a reformation of sorts um, and maybe lusting after this new world experience it could be that it could be that let's just see where it goes because I'm not really sure but the Knight of Wands is definitely an extreme expression of passion. Well, I'll say intense expression of passion. But is that pure? Is it productive? Is it prosperous? Is it responsible? All questions that you would want to ask. Whether this be you projecting that energy, like to just be really passionate, even maybe lustful about some outcome, person, occurrence, territory, object, whatever the fixation may be. Is it healthy is the question. Is it adding value to your energetic force or is it debilitating or distracting in some way shape or form that's the question here with the knights because there's definitely some ambition for an exchange with that kinetic energy or electrical current it's like if i'm putting this energy out there's an expectation to oh maybe conquer the world <laughs> there's that you know with the knights but is this like taking biting off more than you can chew or is this the energy that one would need to have to conquer the world it's just a matter of what reflection of the world are we talking about are we talking about the world that that gets to be regenerated reformed or you know as in the old world or are we talking about being ambitious and more or less like unstoppable in your determination for a new world order that's the thing is is the motivation of the ambition but also the object that makes all the difference so let's see here should i take the world card out sure why not why not? Oh, Queen of Swords, Queen of Wands now. Hmm. I don't 
up, but let's remember that the Queen of Wands showed up. And now it's, give, it's a, like trying to, trying to conquer someone or something that may a bit, like I said, a bit out of your league or I don't know. The knights are always questionable though, because it's either an underdeveloped expression or an expression with strings attached or with some ulterior motive or one that may or may not be 100% dependable or reliable. And now coming up against the Queen of Wands or coming toward the Queen of Wands, there is a great distinction in, in position there. So, let's see. Hmm, sun card. Hmm. I'm gonna go up. Should I go up? I'll stay down, but let's try to get more on the board. Sun card and what's this? Whoa! <laughs> so exposure, yeah, mm, of some addictions or like I said, some some distorted frequency here. This is now given perverted passion. So maybe somebody's uh, motives and intentions are being exposed or will be exposed. Bef I would say before there is either upon contact or before there is contact. Now that we remember the Queen of Wands is there, it's like a knight rushing in to conquer. Oh, wait a minute, though. Because if it's a knight running in to conquer, maybe he's trying to conquer the world to deliver it to the Queen of Wands, but it's a big feat. Now I will go up. This is giving me something different. But there's some... It looks bigger <clears throat> than... Like something almost out of his jurisdiction. To... To overcome. But there is a greater force here. empowering that charge and here is either what has been the greatest opposition against this force which is why it looks like oh he doesn't stand a chance you know maybe even somebody that's had to fight great addictions or you know just their lower nature their primal nature their their um their sheer fixation on survival alone to you know to 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 move out of fear for survival some some lower frequency here that that should have and and, and perhaps at some point could have been a tough, like a hard, a rough opponent. You know, I, I don't want to say worthy opponent because the devil energy is never truly worthy, <laughs> you know, of anything except for your awareness and your release as needed. 
but is it somebody that maybe went to bat or went head to head with the very worst of himself against all odds to overcome it because it's a great power for sure. Maybe somebody had many addictions or had many traumas and dramas or, you know, just a real rough hand in life. And somehow they still champion through for themselves, if nothing else, but empowered by this great force here. Like they didn't, they had, they, they had a great support system, let's say. And it, I mean, maybe even intangibly so, but there was a great support system here to help them gain this victory. And now... Yeah, okay, so that's the reason for the world card because that's the cycle, the great accomplishment or success that has been uh, realized and now the new beginning. But the devil card, it's like somebody, it was, it was a bitter, brutal fight. Hmm. And with the um, with the Queen of Wands showing up when I when I took what I forget how she showed up, but when the Queen of Wands showing up, it could be that being almost almost the motivating force, like the drive or the the incentive, because she was on. You know, I think it was on the count of the world card, wasn't it? On the other side? Yeah, when I moved the world card. So it's kind of like that was somehow a motivation or a drive for someone to evolve, to heal, to ascend, to release some toxic nature of himself or to uh, overcome their darkest nature in some way, shape, or form. Like, it literally could be like, <laughs> you know, and practically speaking, like somebody that used to be an F-boy. Like I said in the beginning, yeah, with the <laughs> with the three ladies. And that once upon a time, it would have been their, you know, their greatest temptation to come across a harem of ladies, you know, like all this for me, <laughs> you know, they, it would, would have stopped them dead in their tracks to, you know, mix, mingle, you know, and en enjoy themselves in one way, shape or form. And that hasn't always fared out well one way or another, because, you know, how it is with temptation, it may feel good in the moment, but a lot of times it has an attachment to it that could be much longer lasting than it is for that gratifying momental, momentary experience. So this is somebody that maybe learned to avoid those pitfalls, to subdue that sensationalism, or at least the temptation for ex sensationalism exclusively and, and to elevate his passion for something more lasting. That's what I'm getting here. So that's why I said, well, I don't know if he's running away or running into, because once upon a time, it could have been a 50-50 chance, if not more so on the he more heavy-handed end that this was absolutely the temptation of somebody, whether it be women in general or just whatever the fancy was, that there was something that the lower nature could always trust would be a distraction or be a detour in someone's path. And somehow they have overcome overcome that that uh that temptation. They've they've maybe gotten to the root of why that is the case, like what what really is the satisfaction and whatever that draw may be because there's when we have a an addiction or a habit that 
isn't holistically life forwarding. There's always a reason for it. There's always a root cause. What are we accommodating for? What are we compensating for? Or what void are we filling? Particularly in way in the way of confidence and security, for sure, with the wand energy here. And if we talk in primitively in terms of men with women, it usually is a compensation for you know, why, why, or men or women, so not to be, you know, sexist or anything, but, but it, there usually is a direct correlation as to why we choose the women or men that we choose um, from a much deeper, darker rooted cause and why we feel comforted with a certain caliber or energetic um, frequency in our lives, whether again, it's embodied by a person, a habit, a place, um, an idea, whatever the temptation was, whatever could stop us in our tracks from being our, from this great achievement here of evolution, of moving forward, of closing one um, closure and one cycle and, and being able to live fresh and new in some other way. Okay, so back to what I was saying, it's some if I can take it primitively, which of course is not limited to, I'll probably figure out how this is more figurative and can be expressed on a more expansive level. But for now, with him running away from the three women and there being like this... Um, incentive for someone of a it's it's not so much that the queen of wands is better than the knight of wands but there is a disparity and it could even be a, a younger man and an older woman so it could even be that sometimes i forget that with the knights that it, that dynamic could be what it is as well but either way it's somebody feeling feeling inspired to elevate their passion or purif purify their passion to be pre presentable to um, an object of, of affection in one way, shape, or form, or just an object of passion. Again, it could even be an opportunity, and this is it's embodied in the spirit of a woman, but not, not materially so. It literally be, could be someone wanting to... Um, upgrade themselves to meet the challenge of whatever they desire to have more than what they were settling for at a lesser value, if that makes sense. So it's like you could have three women that don't even equal the um, the value of the one, but there would you have to do much less to be acceptable or viable to those three although you spread yourself much more thin, but you don't have to do so much change and evolving and ascending and, uh, you know, elevating and upgrading to please the three. But for the one though, the one queen of wands, yeah, you're going to have to come a little bit different. So this is giving me the energy that somebody did the work on themselves to bring, and it could even be their own personal confidence, not even so much of how, they were revered in, in any regard, whether it be by the three or by the one, but their own personal conf confidence to meet the challenge of whatever, to, to answer the charge of whatever this challenge was to them. They needed to feel confident and secure and stable and worthy and powerful enough in their own being and in their own right and that calls for some great healing, maybe a deep dive into what was resisting that realization and what could empower it forward. Wow, that's dope. That's really dope. So either way, even with the incentive or with the inspiration, no matter what it was, it still is it, it's, I mean, it's a great feat here, something definitely worth celebrating with the world card um, to have elevated yourself and to have the ambition and drive to do that. When, as I said, what match could you, it was a hard, 
you know, a hard head to head pause, <laughs> you know, to take on this challenge and this charge, but you definitely not the eyes, the odds were not in his favor to do that, but he did it anyway. And because of his personal ambition to be willing to step up to the challenge is why he had access to this source and force that pushed it along. You know, like this is like the unsung hero or the hidden helper of an energy that nobody could see somebody had in their arsenal. So look on sight, it's like, oh, that's just the Knight of Wands. We, he gonna be lost in the saw as soon as he start, you know, or like he's no match for, I know exactly what he likes. I know what he into. I got the perfect distraction. And it's like, nope, <laughs> you know, somebody just couldn't be, couldn't be tempted. They had their they had their eyes and their energetic focus set on something higher, even if they didn't necessarily feel at the on start that they had what it took to achieve it or to obtain it. They had at least the ambition to try. And sometimes that's all you can do is at least try to try to do something for yourself or to here's the faith you know, in action to say, I don't know how, I don't even know if, but I'm going to go forward anyway and pray that the rest is added unto me. That is, whew. What a man, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. <laughs> oh, that's, that's powerful. Mm. Because some people don't even have the the energy to try. It's too hard. And, and also when you think about how much easier it is to succumb to your temptations and to, you know, that sensational nature of your primal self, it's much more easy and accessible to do that. You get the support that you could get to do that would... would come without you having to move a muscle. As a matter of fact, it almost would be preferred by said energy that you wouldn't move a muscle and wouldn't even try or have the audacity to think that you're worthy of anything more. And, and th that energy will meet you right where you are to make you quite comfortable in your lower frequency so that you don't even feel like you want to, uh, you know, aspire to anything more. But the energy here works differently. It's like you kind of have to show some ambition and drive before it will show itself to you or through you. You know, it takes faith to get some things activated. And of course, we know faith without works is dead. So it's not just somebody like, I think I can, I think I can. It's like somebody actually putting into action the perspective that they that they idealize for themselves. So that could look like, you know, somebody not going to the same places that they used to where they know they would be tempted, you know, to or or not um associating with a certain group of people that they know are into the things that they would fall into if they are around or, you know, or not indulging in the same habits or behaviors that lower their frequency to desire other things or to fall into different pitfalls. And, um, you know, being more proactive about putting yourself in spaces that speak more to the highest aspect of you than they do your lowest expression, if that makes sense. So it's still a matter of having to be proactive in all the right ways. But the devil energy in us all will certainly make <laughs> great accommodations for you to just just chill and do absolutely nothing. Here, I, I'll bring the weed man to you. I'll let, you know, have friends that'll be willing to come over every day and and, um, you know, bring bring drinks and bring girls or bring, you know, I'll put you in a position where you, you, you 
hustling or doing something strange for change is more accessible than actually getting a job or or is more comfortable than pursuing your passion so that you you're more fearful of how you're going to live your everyday life than you know than you are of what happens on account of doing things that are a threat to your everyday life you know it's like it'll help you along in your misery and in your despair if you let it so it takes a very strong and powerful force to buck out of that like nah I got to do something different. Even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's out of my comfort zone, even if I'm unsure as to whether or not I have what it takes to be successful in that regard, or, you know, or if I, I don't even know if I'm worthy to have access to what I am believing for, but I know that this isn't it. That's, that's something. As somebody that's around a hundred girls that all are, you know, would love, <laughs> you know, because the Knight of Wands is a good time, okay? Like, he ain't got no problem with the ladies, for sure. So, put to put it back into that practical, primitive, I should say, perspective, it's like somebody that's not hurting for a date or for a love interest. He, he, they falling at his feet. You know, that everybody will want a chance. Everyone in a certain frequency, you know, around him will want a chance to jump on the wand, if you know what I mean. But it's like, for the one that I want, it's not that simple. You know, it's like the one that I want might be celibate. So I can't even just go and, you know dick her down real quick and know you know it's like somebody the knight of wands knows how to use his wand so it's like i can't even lead with that energy i gotta lead with something else like my conversation my ambition for life not just for the panties you know what i mean i gotta i gotta do something different I, and so in order to do something different you have to be something different you know so mm, this is wild i'm interested 100 <laughs> percent yes honey that type of that type of ambition is extremely sexy to me that that is very seductive and alluring like somebody that yeah, that's going to stand their ground for, for themselves on what they establish, what they believe in, not follow the crowd, not doing what everybody else is doing. Again, not swayed by temptation or even expectations of society. Like as a man, like this is what I'm supposed to do as a man or even as a young man. Like, you know how that go. Like, oh, you're supposed to just be having fun doing you being wild and reckless it's like not necessarily you don't have to be it's, it's all a matter of choice and really you know considering what has it yielded you other than a good time some good stories to tell maybe some fond memories here or there but ultimately probably more trouble than it's even worth you know when you really are wise about your energy and that is very admirable to me about men or women, of course, you know, because men aren't the only ones that can be a bit careless or um, maybe a, a little too liberal in their sexual energy or their passion in general. You know, I can even attest to that once upon a time as a young as a young woman that I wasn't as selective. Now, I say that a lot, so I just want to be clear. Like, I wasn't no hoe now. <laughs> like, no disrespect to any hoes out there. But I wasn't as selective as I could have been in many ways. I was a bit more carefree, not in the, in the magnitude, or I should say in the um n n numerous experiences no not so much but when the passion drove me uh, first of all it takes a lot to really ignite my passion so i'm already selective in that regard okay and that's always been the case even when i was more liberal in the exchange 
but when it is ignited, you know, and sometimes passion can be ignited for things that are not even supposed to be sexual. There is just co-creative or inspirational or just an ignition for creativity or whatever. But before I was wise enough to know that and to know even more so just how potent my passion was and, you know, how much of a hot commodity it truly was, I was more liberal when, with that spark, you know, with that, that, um, what do you call it with the, not the spark, but like the chemistry, you know, like that kinetic chemistry, like, man, I really, I'm digging him. I like him. I like his vibe, whatever. And then allow it to go from there. But now knowing, as I said, the value of my own and also the, um, how precious it is, you know, and, and also how vulnerable it can be to be untainted or misused, abused or um, uh, damaged, you know, I'm much more reserved and selective. As a matter of fact, it's like a, a, a no-go all around. Like the energy, the kinetic energy is reserved for creativity alone right now until spirit ordains otherwise. And it's been that way for some years now. <laughs> So, you know, and it's not, of course, it's not like the easiest. That's why I'm saying like, even as a feminine, I can attest to it. Like it, it's, it's easy now to me. It's fine. They're, they're, the temptation is quite low for me at this point because my vibration is so high that, like I said, you, you'd have to really be coming pretty strong in ways that are not sexual, first and foremost, before I feel like, oh, I got to have them. You know, it's got to be something more, some different type of chemistry there. And even as I said, like just being, um, being uh, turned on quite naturally, quite honestly, in this regard, by somebody having that passion for themselves, for their self, that is more seductive to me than physical connection, you know, so maybe I shouldn't be talking so much and giving away the tape <laughs> so people know how to realign themselves, but it's just the truth. It's just, but it'll, but it speaks for itself though. So somebody can't just fake it till they make it by acting like they're so ambitious for their own passion, purity, and their own, you know, their their own power and it, I've always been attracted to powerful people you know powerful men particularly but to me like what that what power truly is is different than what I used to think it was before so it's very specific and very selective so even if somebody tried to kind of promote some persona of this or that if it's not authentic, it'll kind of tell on itself. But in this regard, this is somebody that's not really doing it for somebody else. They're doing it because they want to be better for them. That's the key. That's the ticket. And that is the thing that is sustainable and is pure substance itself. That means that if you don't get the, the perfect girl or you don't get the dream job or opportunity or if you don't, you know, get the the rewards and the recognition is it's still worth it for you because you've become a better man on account of what you were you were courageous to champion for yourself you know that's 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 dope to me is this back again are we for real right now yeah because somebody's so damn powerful that it's like those energies are trying to pull. It's like a team up here. This could be family, friends that see this evolution and are like, no way, come back, don't leave us, stay here with us. Well, yeah, like the friends you used to hang with, the girls that was throwing their they bra and panties at you, you know, the 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 homies on the in the hood that more or less gleaned from your energetic influence. You know, imagine like a supreme hustler that's thrown in the towel, but you were the way everybody was eating. And it's like, it ain't quite the same when you're not there because everybody ain't living in 
prosper in a way that it's, there's a certain attractive force already assigned to someone that has an ambition like this, which is why this energy is so persistent in the first place. It's like somebody's already comes empowered, like ready made from an from from an origin of source. That's something that, you know, comes with a great influence of opposition for sure, but it also comes with a great source of, of, of power, resource of power, so that if you can see yourself for who you, who you should be, you'll win the battle every time on account of actually going after that truth because you have a much more power source, a more powerful force behind you than even the lowest nature of you. It'll make it so that the things that you used to do, the places you used to go, the people, you you know, those temptations don't even taste the same anymore because you're not the same. You try to smoke, you know, that weed the way that you used to or, or drink drink what you used to or whatever and it's like meh <laughs> like uh or you don't even get high you know or you don't get drunk or whatever not not saying anything against anybody's activities extracurricular or otherwise i'm just saying like when somebody is clear about what their pitfalls are everybody doesn't have the same level of temptation so some people is not it's, it's not the same core attachments, but this is somebody that realizes why they do what they do and is diligent about disconnecting from that dependency so that they can be a sovereign being and have what they want and be who they ultimately want to be. It's, and that, that's very unique for everybody. And most of what was not unique, though, what is universal is that when you make that decision and that determination, you will have opposition. You will. And that's what makes the victory that much sweeter is because there was a great feat for you to overcome just to get to a place where you could stand your ground on what you believe in. Out of all the illusions, confusions, delusions, you know, like, yeah, like that lower frequency would want to delude you to feel like, where are you going? You know you can't do no better than this. You know this is what makes you happy. You know this is what keeps you calm. You know this is what makes you feel good, makes you feel strong and empowered, like the false sense of securities that we can be distracted by in many different shapes and forms, but having the strength and the will and the courage to stand against it and say, no, I, I control my primal nature and I'm just as much spirit as I am carnal, you know, or primal. And there needs to be a balance. It doesn't mean that I can't be sensationalized, that I can't enjoy the sweet sensations of life but it does mean that I'm committed to there being balance and boundaries. That's what this is saying. And somebody was not, is no, is not confused on that anymore where they may have been once upon a time or just distracted by the lesser, the least of the lesser choices or the lesser of the least of, of choices available. Like this is the best I can do somebody realizes that there's more beyond the veil in every way, shape, and form. Also a trick of, of, of the devil energy to make you feel like you don't have many options to limit your perspective of who you are and what you deserve and what you have access to and what you're capable of. Let's see, it's in reverse. Mm. Delayed offers, no longer delayed. Moving forward. 
Wow, and the Five of Swords, yeah, by way of this interference. People that will hold them back on the rewards, you know, interfering with the, the, the benefiting, how can I say this? Like people that were interfering with how rewards and the return of your hard work was released and disseminated don't have that luxury anymore. They've ultimately defeated themselves, now holding themselves back or, or are being held back from their own fortune and their own progression on account of how they may have tried to superimpose resistance in your life or in whomever's life. This is not, you know, certainly not um, projecting this onto you, certain, you know, for sure, but if you if it resonates it resonates and there's some bit of this that i'm sure we can all resonate with because like i said if you're operating or have operated in the frequency of of devotion to a change um, a significant change you know in who you are then you have certainly faced opposition you've certainly faced interference resistance objection you know difference of opinion folks that want to continue to bring temptation into your life in the ways that you used to, you know, that they know you, you're most susceptible to or most vulnerable to. Ooh, the wind's kind of, kind of strong. Goodness. <laughs> but it's like, no more delays. No, no more delays. Now you get to reap the materialization of reward for your devotion because that's the other thing too which one was one of the tacti tactics of the opposition like to almost make you feel like well what am i doing this for you know i made I, it's one thing to feel better about yourself or to you know like i said it's not about you know some carrot dangling at the at the finish line like oh i gotta go you know, got to go get that carrot. So for some, you like I said, you didn't know what was at, on, at the other end of that rainbow. You just knew that you wanted to get to it. So one of the tricks of the enemy and any oppositional force was to delay that satisfaction and that gratification to make you feel like you either wasted your time and energy or it was all just a, you know, a dream, a facade or some delusion of your, some delusion of grandeur that you could ever you know, receive uh, a harvest for your sowing that you should, and what does that do ultimately, but just deflect to you that you should, you should just go back to what you were doing, or you should have just stayed where you were, at least you were enjoying yourself, at least it was a good time, at least it was immediately gratifying, at least it was lucrative, it was pro a profitable or whatever, but that's just, that's that seven of cups illusion, like that, that um, limitation that projection that often does work as a source, as a um, de as a deflection of temptation, because it will make you feel like when you don't have tangible evidence for your results, maybe it, maybe that's right. Maybe I what I did is not enough, or I just was never worthy of receiving anything more in the first place, and I I was silly to think otherwise. It. That devil energy can can creep in at just the right moment when you're maybe in a material or energetic moment of despair, a weakness, a weak point to say, you know, you just you just should just do this over here, you know, just at least get high, like take a load off, relax, re free your mind type of energy, you know, that that's when the, the, that that voice creeps in, but. What did I see? Yeah, that that yeah, but the, the five of swords is 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 just as defeated as it tries to deflect. You know, when anybody, anything, or anyone that wants to win at all costs is not confident. Yeah, competition is not confident within themselves to do it on their own merit. They have to kind of bring other people down or try to bring other people, draw people into their misery or. And I'm saying people, but it's an energy, you know, it's a spirit that that is insecure to see anything else exist or thrive beyond it because it puts the pressure back on that entity or that energy to now have to 
to at least feel like they got to do something different. And particularly if someone, if that energy is dependent on your energy, it can't really feed off of you on the highest frequency. It kind of needs to bring you down back to their size. To, you know, like I said, the homies that want to come over and drink and smoke and bullshit and F girls all day can't do that if you're not into that. So it's like a buzzkill for them. And the energy that you you um, generate, even at your lowest form most times, because like I said, it's of a different source origin, or origin of source. That alone is still more valuable than you. You at your lowest is still more valuable than perhaps where they are. You know, because there's always, there's a difference in origin here, you know, and that's exhibited in the ambition and drive alone. Whereas some folks don't want to leave where, where they feel comfortable. This is the comfort zone to always be in survival mode. That's where it's safe at, even though it's not clearly, as you can see, to be in these unnecessary competitions with one another, but ultimately just out of fear for survival. But someone that is that would want to rise above that or live beyond that poses a threat to this continuum or at least invokes uh, an insecurity amongst those that feel like, well, shit, what the hell is wrong with me or what, what's wrong with what we've been doing? Or, you know, or, you think you better than me type of energy? Like, no, I just think I'm better than the me I'm being. That's all. And I want to continue to be better than even that. That's it. You know, it's like everybody doesn't doesn't get the game in the same way. Yeah, look at this. Exactly. Ace of Cups. Everybody's not on that frequency. And look, Knight of Swords, I saw it at the under here. So Knight of Swords, that's the anger, the the entitlement even to to latch on to your energy or to maintain it for self to to maintain that core that dependency that currency you know they don't even know why they feel so overindulgent or or entitled to your presence and your energy but they know it makes them feel good they know that they rather not be without it you know and so if it's a matter of <clears throat> a disturbance to that currency, that transmission of sorts on account of somebody wanting to be better, then it's just the primal nature of which some are exclusively um, uh, relinquished to or catering to that would make them want to make you to bring you back to a level that is more relatable. Like, come, come on, man, just do this, just do that. Or to even, some even going out their way and even in a more diabolical sense to make you feel bad for who you are or who you're who you're trying to be, to make you feel ridiculous or make you feel like somehow guilty for that, you know, guilty as charged for that or something. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird energy. But anyway, let's move on. A few more and I'm going to get up out of here. I say to anyone that's meeting this opposition head on, and like I said, it could be family, friends. Uh, yeah, woo, exactly, to bring you back down to the pits of hell <laughs> with them, to put an end to your confidence and your courage, and you know, like that's that's the energy here. It's uncomfortable. Because if you change, then they feel like they have to change. And some people don't feel like they have what it takes to change. Some people are not as ambitious and driven. Yes, five of cups. Some people don't, don't see a way out of despair and depression and shame and guilt. And all those densities of lower frequencies that they've just kind of made themselves at home with. It's like, why would I... It, it feels more agonizing to try to move against this than it does to just wallow in it 
and that's sad that's really that literally is a misery loves company type of energy here that's sad that's sad for the host of this energy for sure however what it doesn't get to be is sad for the one that's opposing it or moving against it that's that has found a, maybe they shared this frequency and now they found a way out of it like you can't feel sorry you know it's kind of like that's what it's giving me survivor's remorse i always say that wrong is it survivor's remorse I think so. Survivor's remorse or something like that. I think you know what I mean, though. Or when you feel bad because you, in some cases, like actually survive. Like, you know, when it's been like a really bad, tragic accident and you were the only one to come out alive. But in a more general sense, it it's on account of having um, achieved a certain level of success or um, ascended in some type of energetic or spiritual way, and you feel bad for whom you may be leaving behind or who doesn't really connect to what you're doing. And sometimes you can fall into the pitfall of trying to bring people with you or, you know, you feel guilty in a sense that you want to <clears throat> you start to overcompensate for that void between you and them or you and it or whatever. And you almost sacrifice yourself for that, um, in that, dis for that disparity when it's like, it's not really on you to do that. Everyone has the same invitation more or less in the same time in the day we, we may not all originate from the same source, or maybe we do, I don't know. But either way, just you being an example of what is possible is what's supposed to be the influence, not bringing yourself back down to size or overcompensating for it by way of like giving more of yourself than what you know is healthy or productive. You know, you can't, you can't sacrifice yourself for the sake of others vitality or healing it's just there has to be like i said in order for there to be that supportive um frequency uh or not frequency but supportive um reaction i don't know what i'm trying to say here but and to activate that support system is what i should say there has to be a self-assertion first and people that are not willing or able to assert that passion for themselves first are only going to eventually just drag you down to where they are. It's just the law of nature, probably spirit and natural at this point. You know, the law of man and spirit. Here you are just trying to help, just trying to heal. And then lo and behold, lo and behold, yeah, you, you end up back in the same rut that you got yourself out of. Like, mm -mm. you become the living sacrifice. That's what this is giving me here with the death card and the page of pentacles. All that vitality that, that even more depreciated than the knight of pentacles in reverse at this point even though it's upright but what, look what it's attached to death ending destruction like this would be the transformation of depreciation and value for you meanwhile those that you would have wanted to to transform by way of your presence are still doing the same thing that's usually how it goes unfortunately What's on the bottom? Yep, exactly. And you become the casualty of your kindness. Literally a living sacrifice here. Mm -mm. Nope. You do more setting yourself apart. And, and like I said, establishing boundaries than you could ever do by being in close proximity to thing, 
things and people and places that you know are a temptation for you, that you know have a certain energetic effect on your, your wholeness and well-being. Kind of upright but kind of a struggle but more upright than anything but this is the point of like getting away moving on moving forward yeah crossing over to where you the, the into the the land that's been been that you've been paving by way of your passions honestly it, you deserve to do that you deserve to reap the benefits of your ambitions and your drive for, for things that are of, of substance, that are, that are prosperous and, you know, I mean, whatever, whatever the case may be, because everybody's crossing over into whatever land they've created by way of their own passions and ambitions. That's just the reality of it, but some people well, that don't deserve to hitch a ride will want to jump into your boat with very little fare to do so and and weigh down that passage, if not block it and obstruct it altogether. And it's only up to you as to how that gets to be. Yeah, because they know what they exactly, the Page of Pentacles, they know what it really is and who you really are, even if they don't know, you know, like it's known the value of your energy, particularly if you've been working to cultivate it at its highest. You can't really get around that projection. You know You know how you could just kind of tell. Even if somebody is dressed down, there's a certain pheromone of wealth, <laughs> usually, that you can sense off of someone. It could be in how they talk the things that they are willing to do or not, what they invest in energetically, materially, or otherwise, what they allow you know, their attention to be drawn to or what they ignore or resist. You know, it's just, you could tell, like I said, it's like you can, even in the most primitive sense, like, nah, I don't wanna do that right now, or nah, I'm good, y'all, you know, y'all have at it, or whatever, like, you can see the change in someone, especially when you know them as one thing, particularly as like the Page of Pentacles, people that may have known you when you were younger, or like I said, less mature, less evolved, less aware of your value. So you asserted it differently or carelessly to, to the point of maturity, dare I say mastery, when it's just certain things that you just are not going for, there's just a, a hard no, a hard pass. That's very evident and apparent. You know, and it's, and as it's said all the time, probably too much, to whom much is given, much is required. So the only person that's going to protect the value of that asset, you being the, 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 the hottest commodity in that portfolio is you, is you. Nobody else is, is responsible for making sure or maintaining the highest frequency of you. It's actually almost like, um, almost like expected that anybody operating less than that, that isn't willing to do more or be more, it's almost their duty to, to make you less than. It's like you can't even be mad at the devil. The devil, that energy does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> like, no, no, it's wasted energy to be mad. You'd be well more um, enlivened to invest that energy in being healed and maintaining your highest frequency as you, magnifying, I should say, your highest frequency at every turn, because the, the devil is always gonna be the devil. 
until the devil is no more. And at that point in time, nobody has to worry about anything. But until then, it's up to you to protect your highest value. This means you can't fall into the pitfall of guilt, shame, um, pity, you know, feeling sorry for, obligation, all those attachments have to be released. Yeah, look at this. King of Wands. I know that's right. Knowing exact now that there we go from the from the night. Evolved creativity, passion, mastery, as a matter of fact. Powerful, courageous, objective. not easily tempted, self-controlled. All of that is the evolution of this energy. I love it. Yeah, and some people are sad about it because <clears throat> first of all, to evolve from, like I said, you already had the energy and the power. It was already known. But now to be in the King of Wands where it's like you, it can't even be manipulated or swayed, siphoned, conducted, uh, monopolized none of that it can't be it's it's like somebody has has completely reclaimed their power and is quite assertive as to how they project it which is sad for those as i said that can't lay claim to it anymore or can't you know siphon it or or um benefit from it in some secondary way because they don't feel that simply because they don't feel they have it within their own being to access for themselves which everybody can and could but if you're going to sit in this energy of feeling you know of it, it, it's that energy of of dependency that will put you in a place such as this with the nine of swords where you're like you feel like hopeless. You don't you you don't have any self, you know, any control over what gets to happen for you tomorrow. You're almost afraid of it on account of a lack of creativity here, a loss of power that wasn't yours in the first place because if it was, then you'd know exactly what to do. You know exactly how to react and respond and respond to even the worst things that could occur that haven't even occurred yet with the Nine of Swords. This is some anxiety about what could happen, but it's because someone was so comfortable, someone or some people were so comfortable and dependent upon your pure energy that they felt like that resource alone was enough to sustain their own ambitions. And in every way I've already expressed that, you know, it could be in terms of people siphoning your creativity. It could be your confidence, your spark, you know, that uh, your charm and your charisma, there it is, charisma. Like it's like the homies, you know, all y'all go to the club. This is real primitive, but just hear me out. <laughs> all y'all go to the club this is more viable for a feminine energy, but we're working with masculines. But you know that when you with a certain person, they get a lot of attention. They attract, they, you know, they have a certain charisma that, you know, they're going to, they're not afraid to walk up to the ladies or a girl that's attractive and maybe she got some friends. And so because they have that charisma and that drive and that courage and that spark, you may glean off of what they are given just by association, you know, it's that type of frequency, but it could be more, um, it could be deeper than that. You know, when I'm talking about wand energy, I'm talking about it in charisma and attract, attractive force, but it could, it could literally be somebody's power being so magnetic that wherever they go, their, that influence is, is beneficial to where, to everyone there. Like everybody eats, everybody lives, you know, somebody that's so lucky and generates so much, you know, I don't even know what to call it, but something about that fire energy where everyone can be affected, but in a good way, 
everybody, when it is good, mind you, but for those in a lower frequency, they don't really care as long as it's what they need and want. But when you take control of that energy and you may begin to kind of separate yourself or even sanctify yourself from the things that actually de de depreciate or deplete that power, it's only a detriment to those that were benefiting from it the most and doing the least to do so, you know? So anybody that is, you know, that's a, I think that's a, a sure test of, uh, of, of, uh, I don't know, like boundaries, knowing, you know, when you can kind of reflect or observe the, energies that you're connected to like are are is it people that feel like they have something to offer you or care about how you are how you're doing they respect your your process respect your evolution respect your presence first and foremost or is it just a matter of you know challenging you in ways that benefit them exclusively to do things that are contrary to your highest frequency, even when they know that it's not, you know, it's it's not empowering, you know, and that could be in small senses just by way of how you think about yourself or what you think about things, as well as the big measures of uh, of, of energetic force by way of your attention, what you, how you manifest, what you invest your manifestation energy into, what you, um, uh, what you chase after or what you what your drive is empowered by all of that is it money is it cars is it clothes is it like you know what I'm saying there's a there's a distinction here and especially given that we're still in mercury retrograde and a lot of these concepts are up for review particularly by way of partnerships relationships that do or do not project the most supreme identity of you that's don't, don't do or don't support it or do or don't um again project it you know that's the main piece here like what what am i aligned with and what's aligned with me and how is it working for me or not you can't leave it up to those that benefit well almost up oh, judgment <laughs> You know what? And I'm going to leave that there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. To op to, to really... Y'all saw how that fell into my hand. So I'm going to take it to really exercise superior judgment. Supreme selective judgment. Because your life depends on it. Look at this. From death to judgment. This is like a resurrection um, a trail here. And like I said, that people don't want to see you evolve in some ways, in the ways that doesn't doesn't benefit them anyway. And then, of course, on the upside, there are plenty of people that are rooting for you and that do have your best interest at heart because they have their own best interest at heart. So it matters most to find your way to those um, those connections and and associations, commitments, contracts relationships, whatever form they may take, those are the things that you should allow yourself to continue to be passionate to pursue and to hold out for until until you see that it is that and that is that for sure. Because you can be distracted by those three ladies having a good time in whatever form they present themselves to think like, okay, this must be a safe place to hang my hat. And lo and behold, it's a trap, you know, so you know what is in alignment with your, your purest frequency and what um, incites you to do things that don't make you feel good, that don't make you feel confident, that don't make you feel in control of your creativity, of your passion, and that, you know, are detriment to your power. You know, you know what those things are. As a king of wands, you know what that looks like and what that feels like. So it, it, what matters most is that when you know, you take the necessary steps, precautions, make the proper actions and reactions to assure your power is secure. Point blank period. 
So you don't have no sleepless nights. You you can sleep easy. Yeah, like be being selective with how you share your energy. That's what this is giving here to to be clear that everything is cause and effect, give and take. And if you just giving it away to people out of, you know, even out of um pity like, "Oh, well, they don't have much." I'm a, you might find yourself in debt on account of who you gave to that really didn't deserve the handout. They can get it on their own. They just choose not to because you were the most accessible source. And they don't want to get it on their own because you've always been available. But it's time for everybody to get it how they live. And yes, there's opportunity to share and for communal um, uh, affluence and, and for us to uplift each other collectively but you have to be mindful as to what that looks like for you because the one thing you wouldn't want to do is to depreciate your value given to the wrong people places and spaces and now not have enough to give to those that you could you were assigned to empower and that would have empowered you that would have helped you expand your reach or you know elevate your consciousness whatever the case may be it's like some people are afraid of being on the needy end of of passion and power simply because they refuse to go get it for themselves and that my friend is a they problem not a you problem period and there's no guilt and shame in that regard so, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Continue to protect your energy unapologetically. Continue to strive and thrive, strive for and thrive in the best of you. You deserve the reward of your ambitions and your hard work and dedication and devotion and all that good stuff. Like if you haven't seen it yet, rest assured that it's coming. So don't be tempted to supplement or settle for anything less than what you've already envisioned yourself to be worthy of. Cause this judgment card said that it's in the bag. It's in the bag, okay? <laughs> so enjoy. Thank you for listening and watching again. Until next time, as always, I leave you with peace.